this is basically you know, the typical type of patients that we see in the cat lab. A patient that, who um, has had uh, complaints of chest pain, or shortness of breath, or fatigue. And you know, the real interesting thing is that uh, you know, symptoms can vary to some patients having no symptoms at all, and just having very strong family histories of heart problems, and subsequently having stress tests that are abnormal to those patients that have kind of that classic um, symptom of uh, an elephant sitting on your chest. So because the stress test was abnormal, she was sent in for a cardiac catheterization. There are nowadays some lower risk patients that we can study non-invasively without having to do an invasive procedure using things like these uh, rapid CAT scans. But for the more higher risk patients, uh, we still feel that, at least right now, the gold standard for the higher risk uh, patient is cardiac catheterization. So what we do here is uh, the patients are trapped in, in, a, in a very sterile environment, and we end up getting access into the femoral artery. So basically, I have a needle here, and we'll get into the femoral artery, and you'll see in a minute when we get in there, a little spur of blood that's our arterial blood, and we're now into the femoral artery, which will ultimately lead us up to the heart. And we get up to the heart using catheters. And when people worry about pain of a cardiac catheterization or anything of that sort, really this part of the procedure is the worst part of the whole procedure because this little catheter that I just put in is the catheter that allows us to bring our other devices up to the heart area and treat what we need to treat. In time, I think women were clearly a patient population that was neglected from the standpoint, I think we need to go on, uh, from the standpoint of patient population that were neglected in their cardiac care, because physicians thought that maybe they had lower risks or lower incidence of heart disease but uh, clearly what we have learned it over time is that um, women have um, as high an incidence of uh, heart disease to some extent as men. And uh, so we are uh, much more astute now at, at looking at women specifically and being much more aggressive with uh, women. So what I've done now is brought up a specific catheter that will allow us to engage into the arteries of the heart. And on the top screen over here, you see the patient's um, blood pressure, what we call the hemodynamics. And this is a continuous recording. That's the uh, aqua blue. And then up top is the EKG. And throughout the whole procedure, we're monitoring the hemodynamics, we're monitoring the EKGs, and we're also monitoring the saturation levels, how much oxygen the patient's breathing in, so that we have a full assessment of the patient as we're doing this procedure. And I see that we're in the arteries, and now we're going to go into our specific projections. We've taken pictures of the coronary arteries, and um, here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and take some specific looks at these blood vessels and see if we can see in different angles any particular problem. And so far, with this patient, everything looks pretty good. Sometimes the stress test will be what we call a false positive stress test, meaning the stress test is actually a little bit sick, but the patient is fine. The patient doesn't have any blocks, it is, it's just a stress test. Because sometimes in women, we get what's called breast artifact. The breast tissue for women uh, can get, can move over the heart to actually cause the scan to look somewhat irregular. So now what Debbie and I are doing, we're changing out for a different catheter so that we can then go ahead and look at the third coronary artery. We've looked at the main artery, and we've looked at the circumflex artery, and we've looked at an artery called the left anterior descending coronary artery, and now we're going to move forward and look at an artery called the right coronary artery. So right now what we're going to do is we have a, a catheter called the pigtail catheter, and it's in the ventricle of the heart, and this catheter is going to look, if you look up here, it will look at the pumping chamber of the heart, the left ventricle of the heart, and, and Roger's going to inject dye through the catheter that we have here and it will go into the ventricle of the heart, and the ventricle will initially look dark, and that's the contrast going in, and that's mixing with the blood in the ventricle. 
and then you'll see the ventricle actually become light again. And what that re represents is the efflux or the distribution then of the blood going to the head and, and legs of our body with contraction of the heart. So you'll see that here. Yeah. There you go. That's that's our heart. That's the, the ventricle of the heart pumping blood to the rest of the body. And we'll freeze that and let you get a chance to see that. Right here, it's called a pigtail catheter for obvious reasons. And it's in the left ventricle of the heart. And we've just injected dye. And that's the darkness. And the dye is actually going out through the aortic valve. And this is the aorta here. And this will go to the head and neck and this will go down the patient to supply blood to the patient's lower extremities. And in this particular patient, I'm very pleased to report that her arteries look really good and that her heart pump function is entirely normal and strong. So she um, is a patient who has had what we would call a false positive stress test and um, she uh, has done very well here and we'll be able to send her home later today. I'm going to show you how we'll get her home a little bit earlier, some of the uh, things that we now have to offer patients to allow them to recover more quickly from their heart catheterization procedure. So what we're going to do is remove this sheet that we put in there, and basically um, we're going to use a collagen plug type device that will help um, seal the artery will help seal the artery here so that this patient can actually leave the hospital a bit earlier and, um, and get home. And in addition, it will cause her less uh, discomfort from the standpoint of somebody having to stand over her groin here and hold pressure. That's it. Catheter's out. Our case is done. This nice patient has had a uh, excellent result and has uh, good looking coronary arteries. She will be able to be discharged from the hospital three hours from the time that we've done the procedure here. And uh, she'll go home and uh, kind of take it easy tonight and then pretty much back to normal activity tomorrow.